And my name is Willie Lawson, and this is The Morning Report. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Report here on FightBackMedia.com. It is a gas to be here. It is always fun to be here. It's 11.30, 1 and the a.m. on the East Coast. I remember it gets, um, gets later on the East Coast than it does on the West Coast, so um, if we get a little sleepy before the end of the program, then you know why. Uh, we're <clears throat> Again, we're trying some, something new, and I think this is going to work a whole lot better. We're actually recording a video of the Morning Report. Um, as my friend Paul Swanson put an intro on the front that you saw before, that is fire, fire. And uh, we appreciate uh, Paul. You know, you, you guys haven't heard from Paul in a while, and you will, uh, because I'm going to get him back on the mic uh, sooner than he even realizes. So, uh, again, thank you again for um, staying um, staying tough with us. And this is Morning Report 268. Yeah, you know, we we never thought that we'd get. Let alone never thought we'd get to eight. <laughs> let, let alone two hundred. Let two. Let alone two hundred and sixty-eight. Um, so it it sort of proves what you can do if you don't stop, if you don't quit, if you just push forward. Uh, it hasn't always been easy. It hasn't always been convenient. Um, frankly, it's hardly ever convenient. But things that are convenient aren't necessarily things that you want to participate in, in anyway. You know what I'm saying? So today's program, uh, we got some things to talk about. And none of them have to do with Donald Trump, really, uh, directly anyway. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's go to um, COVID. I'm going to talk about talk about COVID. I'm talking about Chicago COVID and Chicago teachers. Um, there was a big deal about them going back to school. Now I know probably in your area, I know in my area, school is back in. Uh, in my you know in my other life, I talk to children every day pretty much, and. Um, in my county, kids have been back to school for a while, and we've not seen, and what we've not seen is this huge jump in COVID cases in that population. We've just not seen it. Have, have, have there been some? Yes. Have uh, there been some? I mean, I think that this district has done as well, I guess, as you can um, with that kind of thing, but there's, that, there's not been this, this cesspool bubbling, uh, boiling cesspool of COVID in you know what in schools and in in, in in our area, um, they everybody's super diligent about watching the numbers and what you know and, and and sending kids home who are you know or whatever or and or I quarantine quarantine kids who have been around other kids with with COVID or whatever. Um, they're working on it. They're making it work. You know they're one thing I one thing I can say now I have been I've been hypercritical of of teachers. And teachers in my own district, in my own district, my own district. I've been hypercritical over the years, but I, but I got, but I got to tell you, people are making it. People are making it work. So congratulations to even the the school district of Hillsborough County. You're making it work. It's not perfect because nothing is going to be perfect. And I think that the uh, the expectation of perfection is a ridiculous expectation. Um, but I think you're making it work. You know, as well as you can. And it's obvious that kids need to be back in the building by the number of, we had a number of kids at the semester break who got back in the building, who were at home, you know, doing the whole virtual thing, the whole online thing. It's not virtual, it's really education, but it's online thing. And um, <clears throat> so there you go. However, in Chicago, uh, the union made a whole bunch of demands. And uh, apparently, apparently it weren't enough. It just wasn't enough. Um, so they are they are at impasse. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, which I thought, you know, I'm trying to find a chord. It's, you know, I didn't think it was surprising. It, I find it disappointing. And I think the people who, who, who really get hurt are the children. But, you know, that's how we do, right? Okay, so um, let's look at, and our next story is going to be... Um, COVID Cuomo, Cuomo had some health officials quit because they say that he is ignoring the scientific expertise and rewarding some of his political buddies and, you know, donors and lobbyists and stuff. So we'll get into that story. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? 
can you imagine that there would be some sort of political aspect to some of this stuff? Can you imagine? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, no. Yes. So that's what they say is happening. So we'll get into that story in just a little bit. I'm, I'm looking for a cord for my phone if you're wondering what the heck I'm doing um, on the video. Give me a second here. Nope. Not having it. Well, I mean, <clears throat> maybe. Maybe I'll find one in a second. But in any case, so that's... Oh, and um, the Biden communication team <laughs> is... Well, that, you know, you if you've seen any of the, uh, any of the press conferences, you know <laughs> that our girl... Uh, Pasky is her name, or or Jen is struggling. You know, girl is struggling, and she's struggling, and she's not Trump press secretary. <laughs> she's struggling. Um, she is truly uh, growing into her job. How about that, I think all of us would struggle initially in that job. I think. Um, I know, I, I, I know, I'm thinking about myself. I know I would. Uh, because questions come out of left field. I mean, from, from a thousand different topics, from a thousand different um, spins. So it's tough to feel those questions in a way that is consistent with administration policy, because that's what you're there to do. They're there not to ask you questions. They're there to ask the administration questions. And you've got to make sure that you do all that. And she's struggling. So they've got a plan that I'll tell you about, which is kind of funny to me. Uh, but, it is, but, you know, it's not surprising. All righty. And uh, we'll talk about some things that are going on. Uh, there's going to be some live uh, appearances coming up in just a few days, really, in 17, 18 days. I uh, want to make sure that you are aware of. So let's go ahead and get with it right now. All right. Um, like I said, uh, there are a lot of I mean, there, there are a lot of school districts who are um, who are back in school. They are. They are back in school. I found a cable. Yay! Hang on, video people. There you go. There you go. Um, there are a lot of school districts that are back in school. Uh, they're making it work. The one I, you know, here, I, here I, I live in, you know, where I live is back in school and they're making it work. However, in Chicago, <clears throat> Chicago, Chicago, um, the Chicago Teachers Union is insisting on like Zoom lessons or whatever platform they choose to teach virtually. I think um, I like I don't, I don't like the line virtually. I, I like uh, I like the phrase online as opposed to virtually because when you have virtual reality, it doesn't really it doesn't really exist. Uh, I teach saxophone, flute, and clarinet, and I have some students who uh, who are who are home and want to be taught. I use Zoom, so I you know some of them want to FaceTime, and I don't have FaceTime. I'm not gonna buy. I'm not buying a twelve hundred dollar uh, or sixteen hundred dollar cell phone uh, to FaceTime you. Uh, I am um, using Zoom because it was free. <laughs> I mean, this this it was free, so I'm using it. And um, so they've gotten on Zoom and we're using Zoom um, to teach um, music lessons. It's not the best way. I'm going to tell you. It's not a panacea. It is a tool that you can have in the toolbox. Uh, so they want to do that to teach online. Um, the, the Chicago Public School District is the third largest school district in the country. It's huge. You know, because I live in the eighth. So, and it's a, it's a third. It's huge. Uh, and they were supposed to show up yesterday, um, but after failing to reach an agreement with um, the uh, the return date has been delayed. And right now, everybody is what they call a cooling off period. You know, when you have unions and 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 employers work together, and it's and it's, and it's tumultuous, and everybody just wants to back up, take a breath, look around, um, see what your options are. So right now, they're in the coo a cooling off period. Um, it's interesting that I'm sure some of the CNN reporters, I'm pretty sure some of them are like, oh, we can get back to actually doing a job. Wow. This is weird. This is what we talked about in college. Uh, CNN, CNN's Brianna, um, Keelar asked one of the stubborn Chicago teachers what more it would take to get them back in the classrooms. <clears throat> 
The teacher said this, my concern that remain, number one concern I have is that COVID is still spreading in Chicago. The teacher, Kristen Roberts, said, many of the communities in which we teach, COVID is well above 10% community spread, and I don't believe that we have reached an agreement on the question of how vaccines are going to be distributed. Okay, so Willie has a question. What does the teacher teachers union have any say, seriously, any say on how vaccines are distributed? That's not within your purview. It's not within your purview. It isn't. Now, you can decide, again, like they have done in other places, you can decide that, okay, we want to, we want to be able to have the uh, an online option. Um, we, want, we want to be able to uh, make sure that we can not have, um, you know, 87 kids in a class. And you can, you, you can make sure that you can stay in your lane and make sure that that is as safe as possible, I guess. Um, or at least as safe as Walmart or Target, right? But you don't get to decide. You, you don't get to decide how vaccines are are distributed. It's not within your purview. Ah, but maybe in Chicago, it is. You know, uh, Curtis um, Curtis Hook, uh, one of the um, blue the blue checks on 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 Twitter said, by that logic, you can stay closed for another three, five, ten years, right? Because this idea that you take the vaccine, bum, 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 you are cured and you are protected, bink, 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 as COVID bouncing off, um, it's not true. As a matter of fact, all the manufacturers of the vaccines say so. They actually say so. So, hmm. so again, by that logic, you know, if if you're worried about uh, vaccine distribute, I mean distribution, then you're never going back. You're then you personally are never going back. So uh, Roberts went on to argue that she lives with her elderly parents and is concerned about putting them at greater risk. Well, then guess what, Kristen? Then you just have to stay home. Then you may have to do what some teachers did here. They made the decision in this tumultuous time that maybe it was just time to retire or to find another career or something else. Or maybe you could just teach online. Maybe you could just be a Zoom teacher. This doesn't seem hard. You, 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 you know what I'm saying, right? This just doesn't seem hard. This seems like something that you could work out. You know, the social media users who listened to and commented on this conversation agree that the educator is not acting in good faith. There's no way that she's acting in good faith because if they gave you an online option and you were worried about your elderly parents, then take the online option. Demand it. You got it. I can't, you know, my pa- I live with my parents and they're elderly. And so I can't go back. And I really have to limit my exposure so I should stay home and teach from home. Now, this woman is doing this uh, interview from her bathroom. You could tell because she's got, you know, you look and you go, where is she doing this from? Uh, we have the CNN reporter on studio somewhere with a green screen. And then this woman has a shower curtain behind her. So she's, I guess she decided that she would do it in the best lighting she had in the house, which was her bath. <laughs> so, you know, there's plenty of schools. There's plenty of, of, of districts around the country that are making it work. So, and if one of the options, again, if one of the options is teaching from home, then, and you can, and they'll let you, and they'll give you the resources even to do so, then you have to, then you should do that. I have a really good friend who moved across the country to get out of some draconian lockdown nonsense, got out just in time, like escape from New York. <laughs> and um, her company is allowing her to work from home. She still has the same job, making the same cash, working from home, working from home where she was and where she is, is the same for the company. And it's better for her. So I'm excited about, I'm excited about it for you. I am. And you know who I'm talking about. 
Um, so last week, President Biden appeared to side with the CTU, of course, and agreed that they should only return to in-person learning when it feels it's when they feel it's safe to do so. Feel it's safe to do so. Lawmakers like Steve, Steve Scalise, Republican from Louisiana, argued that Biden was caving to the left and siding with the radicals. Um, latest example of Biden, and this is Steve Scalise's um, tweet, latest example of Biden caving to the left. He pledged to reopen schools. He did. Uh, but yesterday he sided with the radical uh, t- Chicago Teachers Union that wants to keep schools closed. When when will he start standing up to those liberal special interest unions blocking kids from classrooms? The only unions that he stood up to so far are the unions that build pipelines. A bunch of jobs lost. Uh, so this is this is really again if you are and if you're watching this and you're a teacher here where I live or wherever. And um, you've been given the option to go into the building or or teach from home. Now I know that if you're, you know, a lot of it's it's been my experience, and it's just my experience um, that unfortunately a lot of teachers are the last to get on to technology. You know, technology goes up, and teachers are still headed down, and then it goes down, and then they start heading up. And so it's like this, this is like this is undulating wave and it, and, and a lot of teachers don't connect right away. So learning to do some of the stuff that people in businesses have been doing for a long time is tough for some teachers. It just is. And especially tough for the teachers who have been successful doing what they're doing. I watch very successful teachers use very old methods that still work and then get asked to do something else or add something and be resistant to it. You know, if it's, you know, if it works, don't break it, right? So adding the element of being able or having to be able to teach online, you know, look at a screen and your kids are out there, it's, it's different. There's no way that anybody can tell you that it's the same because it isn't the same. The dynamic is completely different. The deliveries have to be completely different. Um, how you uh, send out material and, and, and how you grade stuff is completely different. It's like learning to teach over again. It's like teaching, learning to teach all over again. I get it. I absolutely positively get it. I do. However, if giving that option in these times and you want to teach, you'll take it. You will. All right, let's talk a little bit about your boy, uh, COVID Cuomo. The king of COVID, right? Well, the latest installment of the Cuomo COVID Chronicles, <laughs> this article by, is by Guy Benson. That's funny. The Cuomo COVID Chronicles, in which the um, we highlight the cartoonish failures of a governor long lauded by press and other fellow Democrats as an example of strong pandemic era leadership. A myth that he has worked diligently to cultivate and prop up. He wrote a book. Broke his arm, patting himself on the back about what a, what a great job you've done. All of the numbers say most of the COVID deaths are on his head. Um, yesterday, we, re- we reviewed his disastrous public relations response to a devastating report from his own administration's attorney general. Now, think about this. This ain't, this ain't you know, thank Trump, right? This is from his own administration's attorney general, which confirmed what we said all along, that his administration massively undercounted nursing home deaths in the state of New York. Beyond that lethal policy error and subsequent cover-up, the New York Times now reports that the governor is facing more internal upheaval. Nine. Nine. Can you count nine? Right? Nine. Nine uh, senior health officials have tendered their resignations or otherwise departed over Cuomo's handling of vaccinations and other issues. They say the governor has spurned scientific expertise and rewarded cronies. Nine. Crazy. Absolutely insane. But this is, this is, this is what we're dealing with. Now we're going to get into the meat of this story right after these messages.
All righty, all righty. Again, thank you ever so much for spending some time with us here on the Morning Report. It is February 2nd, 2021, the year of our Lord. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, FightBackMedia.com, FightBackMedia.com. Uh, we want you to actually go to the website. We've got some great things going on here. I mentioned earlier there, there are going to be some public appearances of moi um, on, Frederick, uh, on something I'm calling Frederick Douglass Weekend. Frederick Douglass Weekend will start on February 19th and we'll be at, we're going to start off at a place called Daddio's Patio. <laughs> I just get so, I get so tickled with that name. I'm sorry. I just get tickled with that name. And at Daddio's Patio, um, there will be a meet and greet. And um, this meet and greet will uh, feature Autry Pruitt. Autry Pruitt is the uh, one of the officers of Journey, uh, New Journey Pack, which is a political action committee. And um, there will be um, some some people to meet there. Um, Elrod Gilroy, who is the former uh, representative in Louisiana, and um, who else? Who else is going to be there? Some, there'll be some other people there, uh, including me. Uh, and you'll want to be there from six to nine uh, in Ybor City at eighteen twenty two East Seventh Avenue. It's the old it's the old La Tropicana uh, building. It's kitty corner to the Blind Tiger coffee um, coffee shop, so it'll be fun. Parking's in the back, and um, there'll be some. I think I guess there'll be some outdoor space, and there'll be some some indoor space. You want to go ahead and um, and RSVP if you can, and that information is available on our Facebook page, and it's also and some of this information is going to be available on the website as well, fightbackmedia.com. Also, um, if you don't get drunk that night or too drunk that night. Uh, you can join us for the Frederick Douglass brunch on February twentieth, two thousand twenty-one, at ten a.m. It's going to be at the um, Saint uh, on the campus of Saint Pete College in the Allstate Center, as thirty-two hundred thirty-fourth Street North, Saint Pete three three seven zero one. This is put on by the Pinellas Suncoast Black Republicans Club, and um, the guest speakers will be um, George Farrell, the CEO of Black Pack, another political action committee and the author of Colorblind, um, Byron Donalds, who is a Florida congressman um, of District 19, which is the Naples, Fort Myers area, and Kevin McGarry, a good friend of mine, um, who is the CEO of Every Black Life Matters, Every Black Life Matters, and the F Frederick Douglass uh, Foundation of California. Good guy, great speakers. Um, the theme is Do What's Right. Tickets are $35 before uh, th uh, Valentine's Day, and then they go up ten dollars to forty-five dollars. And you can you can actually click on the link that's on our website, fightbackmedia.com, fightbackmedia.com, and that'll take you to the events by bright page, and you can buy your tickets. And if for some reason you can't go, but you just want to, you know, you want to help the cause, help the club out, you can send a donation. So that's cool. Uh, you know, every y'all know every single penny. Uh, helps everything you know towards the bottom line is a good thing. So there you go. You can you can catch me and I'll be doing the show there. Well, you can sit in the I'll sit in the pilot seat. You can sit in the co-pilot seat, and you can ask questions. And you can uh, I got a tip jar if you want to you know put a little money in the tip jar. Again, like everything counts. All right. Uh, let's see where were we? we were in the middle of 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 Cuomo of COVID Cuomo's um, story. The Deputy Commissioner for Public Health um, at the New York State Health Department resigned late summer, soon after the director of its Bureau of Communicable Diseases Control also stepped down. So did the medical director of epidemiology. Last month, the state epidemiologist said she would, too, be leaving. The drumbeat of high-level de uh, departures in the middle of a pandemic came as, a moral, as morale plunged in the state uh, health department and senior health officials expressed an alarm to one another over being sidelined and treated disrespectfully, uh, according to five people with direct experience inside the department. Their concern had almost a singular focus. Governor Andrew COVID Cuomo. Even as the pandemic, pandem pandemic continues to rage and New York struggles to vaccinate a large and anxious population, well, they made them anxious. Uh, Cuomo has all but declared war on his own public health bureaucracy. The departments have uh, have been underscored the, the extent to which pandemic policy have been set by the governor 
who with his aides crafted a vaccination program beset by early delays. The troubled rollout came after um, Mr. Cuomo declined to use the long-standing vaccination plans that the State Department of Health had developed in recent years in coordination with local health departments. So, the state already had a plan for this stuff. Because if you're New York, you got to have a plan for this kind of stuff in, you know, in place when you're one of the largest cities in the world. Um, and, you, and you've already coordinated with local officials because we know that that's how it works best, right? Uh, you've already done that. And it seems like, you know, COVID Cuomo just decided to do something different. Pull in some of his friends from his, from, from his buddies. Use it as a political thing as opposed to a health thing, right? Yeah, that's what it seems like. They alleged Cuomo has been micromanaging public health decisions poorly while ignoring actual experts in ensuring uh, implementation ready plans developed based on best practices. As you continue to, uh, as we continue to go th through this, just listen uh, about how PO these people are. After early problems in which relatively few doses were being administered, the pace of vaccinations has picked up, and New York is now roughly 20th in the nation in percentage of residents who have received at least one vac vaccine dose. When I say experts in air quotes, it sounds like I'm saying I don't really trust experts, Mr. Cuomo said at a news conference um, on Friday, referring to scientific expertise at all levels of government during the pandemic. Because I don't. Because I don't. His comments reflected a rift between the state top elected, uh, a top elected official and the career health ex experts and the sort of of the sort that has occurred across different levels of government during the pandemic. In Albany, tensions worsened in recent months, as state, of, state health officials said they often found out about major changes in the pandemic policy only after Mr. Cuomo announced them at news conferences. Now, I said I wouldn't make this about, you know, Donald Trump. But isn't, come on now, isn't this the same thing that people like Andrew Cuomo were saying about Trump, isn't it? Isn't the very same stuff? He's not listening to experts, and he's, you know, tossing their opinions aside, and he's listening to first-line doctors and his friends, and telling people to drink bleach. Isn't this a, isn't this kind of the same thing? No, I'm not saying that Andrew Cuomo has asked, asked anybody to drink bleach, because nobody has asked anybody to drink bleach. Uh, Officials were blindsided by the news that the rollout would be coordinated locally by hospitals, but it also occurred earlier with revisions in a host of state rules, from the from the fate of indoor dining and businesses like gyms and compa to capacities limits on social gatherings, according to a person with direct expertise um, inside the department. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like um, Governor um, COVID um, Cuomo is Governor Cuomo Cowboy, uh, Cuomo COVID Cowboy, Cuomo doing, you know, freewheeling, doing whatever he wants. And what's happening is that some of his officials, some of his experts, again, we have been told to follow, the, why we need to listen to the experts. Well, shouldn't Governor Cuomo do the same thing? Shouldn't he listen to the experts? Uh, is he an epidemiologist? Now, I'm an epidemiologist who has been certified by Facebook, uh, and I've got the badge for it. <laughs> But shouldn't he, too, be listening to experts? Not just rewarding his buddies, not just sort of uh, being the COVID cowboy that he seems to be. He, you know, one, you know, the Trump guy uh, isn't in office anymore. Who doesn't have anything to do with COVID policy? Uh, this guy's still in office. A lot to do with COVID policy. A lot to do with um, they've built up this, this panic, this fear. The, I mean, people are terrified, and now they're saying, "Well, here's a here here's a cure. Here's a that's what they're saying. Here's the vaccine. It's going to keep you from dying." Uh, yeah, but we don't. I'm, we're not really sure how we're going to get it there. How are we going to get this to every? How are we going to get this to everybody? That's what's going on. People are freaking out, and it's his fault. Speaking of freaking out, <laughs> I mentioned this earlier. Uh, you know. Uh, Jen Psaki, uh, who is the uh, White House press secretary. Now, that's that's one of those jobs that 
You think you want... <laughs> you don't want that job. You don't want that job. You don't. That job's got to suck. I mean, that job has got to suck. It just has to. There isn't any way that that's a good job. There's no way that that's a fun job. There's no friggin' way that that's a good job. That job has got to suck. I mean, you have to show up in front of the um, the tribunal every day, and they get to basically ask questions from every spin and every... I mean, they just get to throw hardballs at you at your head. You know, they're on, I mean, it, you know, in baseball... Uh, there's there's rules against throwing a 90 mile 90 mile hour fastball at the batter's head. In this sport, there's no rule against it. As a matter of fact, it's lauded as a good thing. And what you can't do is you can't duck. You have to catch it and throw it back. It's a completely different, completely different game. So uh, again, I I wouldn't want this job for all the tea in China. I don't want anything in China actually right now. Um, but in any case, especially anything that you eat or drink. So according to the Daily Beast, one reporter discussed an issue during a Zoom call with the White House Correspondents Association and was told to push back against requests by the White House team that is trying to learn the questions in advance. Or just don't respond to Biden's team in inquiries. So what's so what the um, the communication on the Biden's team want people to do now, uh, they would like them to do. They can't, I guess they can't demand it. Uh, well, they can demand it, but they can't require it. Is they want the questions that the press is going to ask in advance. They want the answers to the test in advance. So, and, and it's just got to be so, Jen, sweetie, doesn't look like a deer in the headlights and so they can so they can pick and choose which questions they're going to answer this is can you okay let's just be real for a minute can you imagine if the past administration would have allowed would have would have said that that's how we're going to do it can you imagine people's heads would have been on fire you imagine. You don't get you don't get that. You get to stand there, and they get to throw hard balls at your head, hard. They do. That's how that game is played. You remember when the past administration chose not to, you know, what at at, at press conferences, um, just decided that they he wasn't going to ask answer Jim Acosta's question is because you are fake news, right? You are very fake news. You remember? And people got all, all mad. Um, imagine asking for the questions in advance. Now, let's be real. Do you think... Now, it's the same... Now, folks, it's the same press. Press hasn't become conservative or Republican. It's the same press. It's the same people. It's Jim Acosta, it's the New York Times, it's CNN, it's MSNBC, uh, you know, it, it's the Daily Cause, it's, it's the Huffington Post, it's the same people. So what's that all about? Really? What's that all about? If you're watching the video, go ahead and, and um, underneath there, put your little um, comments on there. I can't, can't wait to hear it. We got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.